It is day 22 of invasion in Ukraine and Russia continues to attack cities causing heavy damage. The city of Kharkiv continues to be the worst hit. A market in Kharkiv was bombed, following which the fire raged on for hours with smoke engulfing the nearby buildings as well. Russia has now released a video of that brutal airstrike on Ukraine. Now this video shows the missile attack that burns an area into ashes within minutes. A theater where hundreds of people had taken shelter was also bombed. All these people had taken refuge in the theater are now appeared to be trapped in the debris. The capital city of Kiev continues to face back-to-back -back attacks. A rocket that hit a residential area destroyed the neighborhood. But the Ukrainians are refusing to give up. Their resistance has also caused significant damage to Russian military. Ukraine attacked Russian tanks that were firing at shelters across Mariupol. The city has been hard hit by the Russian shells and air bombs. Ukraine also shot down a Russian chopper at Mykolaiv. So remember, this is day 22 and it appears that war is nowhere ending in Ukraine. And what is the result of it is on one side the refugee crisis, but on another, people still in Ukraine trying to have at least next and every second hour survive with minimal essentials. We are talking about hospitals, we are talking about children and bomb shelters as well. Let's go specifically to Mariupol. Devastating scenes coming in from Mariupol because the lone hospital standing, as all others, were bombed out by Russia. Bodies are piling up. Doctors could not save. And these bodies are lined up in the basement since the mortuary already is full. The hospital is now serving as an emergency center, maternity ward and a morgue. The dead include a large number of infant babies as well. The injured, many of whom grievously hurt, have now also filled up every nook and corner of this hospital. This, so far, by far, is the most heart-wrenching footage that has come out of Ukraine. Every report, remember, earlier was claiming that Russian troops had even taken some patient hostage at a hospital. But for now, the besieged Mariupol has endured worst misery since Russia unleashed a full-scale invasion on 24th February. The city has already seen heavy Russian bombardment. More than 2,500 people, including children, women, have been killed since then. <laughs> So just take a look on your screen right now. We're talking about a hospital, we're talking about infant babies. And that for now, we are getting this footage coming in from these hospitals. Let's go across to Rajesh Pawar. Rajesh Pawar had been in Mariupol for the longest time and he clearly understands the situation on the ground as of now in Ukraine. Rajesh, when we get these visuals from hospital, which is very different from what's happening on the streets, bombardment and gutted buildings and the ruins that are in place, it's, it's gut-wrenching to see infant babies who are literally trying to survive and some of them we can see are bodies that have been piled up because there's nobody really to treat them at this point. Look, Pooja, these are the reports from Ukrainian media that in Mariupol almost all hospitals have been destroyed. There's only one hospital which is still standing and it is catering for all kind of needs, for emergency needs, for, for maternity, for, for all kind of needs and there are people who are seriously injured. I believe almost 2,500 people have been killed or seriously injured in Mariupol in last few days. And all these casualties are coming to this one hospital. Doctors are not able to cope up with this. The hospital is not able to cope up with this. And their bodies piled up everywhere. This is what the videos and the photos are coming from Ukrainian media. And there was also an attack on the theater, where, which is housing about a thousand people who are refugees or who have been displaced from nearby villages in this theater. And Ukrainian media has said that you, uh, Russian forces have bombed the theater as well. And a lot of people are still stuck in the, in the, in the debris over there. Puja. 
Rajesh, do tell us about the Kiev city, about other cities that are still at least trying to function as much as possible. Because we're talking about 22 days. Remember earlier when we used to speak to you, we would think perhaps in the next 24 hours, in 48 hours, uh, Ukraine may just lose it to Russia. But it's 22 days on and it wouldn't have been easy for Ukraine also all this while. Look, Pooja, I'll show you around. I'll yes, turn please. my camera around and try to show you around. I'm in the center of the city in the Independence Square, and it looks quite calm here. It's a sunny day today, and uh, but it is a uh, calm like just before we say before the storm. Fighting mm. is still going on in the outskirts. I'll just show you around now. You see, this is the center of the square. Are, are people going on and about on the streets, Rajesh? Are, are, are there vehicles? Uh, are people coming out? Uh, how are the civilians reacting? Look, there are in this in center of the square, we just see some homeless people who are stuck here. Because other than this, normal people, very few, okay. very few cars in the streets. And these streets, these cars are basically the people from military or militia who are inside these cars. Otherwise, there are hardly any normal people in this area in the center of the city. You don't see much movement there in the center anywhere here. Puja. So, so what's happening at the at the diplomacy level, Rajesh? Russia, it appears, says that uh, they are trying to also have more negotiations and talks while uh, Zelensky uh, has had a shift on NATO. Uh, what is happening at that level? Because perhaps only that could bring an end to the war eventually. See, as far as the, we had already, the Russia and Ukraine already had four rounds of talks uh, which were inconclusive. And then they decided to have daily round of talks virtually. And only solution, only good thing which came out of these talks was the humanitarian corridors. They agreed that humanitarian corridors will be provided by both the countries. Civilians will not be targeted and they will be able to leave. All those who want to leave or need to be evacuated from the cities, it will be done and they will not be fired upon. They will be safe. This is the one good thing which came out of it. Besides this, we see uh, a change in Ukraine's attitude once they have been totally, totally uh, became hopeless with regards to any kind of military aid. I don't mean rifles and uh, small handled missiles. Yes. By military aid, I mean the aircraft. They wanted military aircraft. They wanted uh, enforcement of no fly zone of Ukraine. Once they realized that they are not going to get any of these things from the West, there has been a softening of stance in Ukraine. And the President Zelensky has agreed. And he has said, we will. We are no longer looking for a membership of NATO. One key point on for which Russia uh, justified this invasion. And second key point was Crimea and Donbas, about which still we do not see any softening yes. of stand from Ukraine's side. And that is where these talks are stuck right now. If some change of stance happens on either side, we will see a solution to this war coming very soon. Puja. Very interesting. And which side will bend first on these talks? That will be also important to see. Uh, Rajesh, if I can just uh, have another question from you. And this will be about, because you've been traveling across the country, uh, you've been to areas that were completely gutted, where firing was happening right when you were there. What happens as and when the war is over? Because Ukraine has to also rebuild itself. And that will not be That's easy. True. People are fleeing. Buildings are in ruin. Absolutely, Pooja. People, that their, their normal lives have totally been disrupted. Cities are in ruins. It will be a massive, massive build-up exercise. And from where this money is going to come, again, you will see America and Western countries then giving donations to Ukraine, helping them to build up. So it is yet to be seen um, you know, what kind of things will happen, Who, where, from where the money will come. The economy is in totally in doldrums right now. A lot of people have fled. They're almost now... United Nations Commission for uh, High Commission for Refugees is pegging the number of refugees at yes. almost 3 million now. There's a, it's a massive amount of people who go out, their lives have been disrupted. I think even if the war stops this month or next month, it will take a long, long time before Ukraine comes back to a normal life the way it was till one month back. Uja. Absolutely. So two developments uh, will be now looked at. One, of course, when the war comes to an end and then what next for Ukraine as a country and the rebuilding exercise that will have to also begin. Rajesh, thank you for now. Stay safe. I'll, of course, come back to you shortly. You've been getting us ground updates daily for India today. But what about the residents there in, in Ukraine? Mariupol resident Diana Berg, who managed to flee somehow from the city amid unending shelling, has spoken exclusively to my colleague Nabila Jamal. Listen in to what citizens are saying and how they're managing to survive when they're shelling all around you. Listen in. 
Diana, I'm really glad to see you safe. If you can tell us what's the situation currently in your city of Mariupol. We know that it's ravaged. We know that millions have already managed to leave that port city. Uh, how did you manage to escape and what's the current situation? Um, hi, uh, indeed, I managed to escape uh, Mariupol, and this is my second time I escaped my home. Uh, first time it was with the start of this war in 2014 in Donetsk, uh, because I'm originally from Donetsk. I lost my home f uh, because of Russia second time. So, um, and uh, again, it was a risky, the same like eight years ago. It was a risky adventure of suicide mission to um, to escape, um, but also it was a suicide mission to stay because um, uh, back then it was eight day of invasion when we left. Um, back then uh, we started understanding that this is not war, uh, that this is a terror because uh, war is when militaries fight between each other war is when uh, there uh, when you comply to the war law um, but uh, Russia does not Russia just exterminates the infrastructure the civilians uh, the buildings and uh, makes everything to, um, uh, to, to, to torture the civilian uh, peaceful people innocent people like the bomb uh, like they bombed uh, I don't know hospitals bus stations fire stations uh, they bombed power stations so that we got out of light and electricity so just total darkness no way to charge your phone no connection no network you cannot call this is just a brick because it's not charged and uh, you cannot call even if you have some, some battery left you cannot call or know what's going on go online find uh, the news about your country about the world about what's happened even in your city you cannot know it you only know where the bomb falls and you hear it and you see you see the bodies and they see the torture that's it that uh, the old news you can get no water no heating no gas and um, no uh, way to let the humanitarian aid like first aid goods medicine to let in the city nothing left no fuel no food no water no medicine that's how uh, russians fight so that was the situation when i was there it just right. started this blockade and um you know i i, I started day. to think mm -hmm. how you managed to pull through the 22 days uh, diana you know while russia claims that they're not targeting civilians today a theater that was uh, attacked in mario Paul really leaves us wondering uh, on the you know their their commitment to what they claim here we're looking at thousands of people who uh, we believe were inside that theater uh, many of them are now caught in rubble and uh, that under that debris uh, the casualties are still unknown a confirmation is yet to come but even as you as you've managed to escape we see bombing continuing in Mario Paul is there resistance enough to stop exactly. the Russian forces at all? Is there any help that you receive from there? Uh, from where? Uh, help on ground by Ukrainian forces. Are they able to protect that region at all? Of course. Uh, Ukrainian forces and military send Azov battalion, actually. Uh, the, the Russian, say, like nationalists, fascists or something. Uh, they are actually angels. <laughs> and our volunteers who left uh, there in Mariupol and uh, doctors, uh, medicine workers, they do everything they can to, um, to protect the city. And the city remains uh, in the like circle of militaries, of Ukrainian militaries. They protect uh, the city. Uh, they fight for it. Uh, and after this circle of Ukrainians, there are like three 
surroundings of, of Russians. That's how the blockade works, right? So they do not let nothing, they, they do not le uh, let people out. Only two days ago, uh, people started leaving very, very risky, dangerous, dangerous route like we did on their own uh, cars. So yeah, Russia doesn't keep promises, that's how they are. They are liars, they are terrorists. That's it. Whatever they claim, they, they always say, oh, we knew this hospital was actually um, occupied mm. by Azov. Oh, my God. Azov was uh, the, uh, is, uh, the battalion who just protects nothing more. They protect us. They protect the city. They fight for the city. They just fight back to these Russian um, terrorists. With Russia-Ukraine war entering day 22, children continue to remain the biggest victim. The invasion is turning a child refugee every second, which means, and this is the data, the specific data has released, been released by UNICEF, stating that around 1.5 million children already have fled Ukraine in the past three weeks. Russia is intensifying its attack on Ukraine. There seems to be no end to these heartbreaking images that continue to come in every day. Neighboring countries have also opened doors for traumatized young refugees. For some, remember, it was just a normal childhood, just about a few weeks ago in February. But now a nightmare with an uncertain future. This image on your screen coming from the capital city of Kiev. And these are refugees one by one trying to be saved. There is also, remember, a dusty basement that has been hidden from the shelling. And 1.5 million children have already left, which means, as UNICEF is stating, an average of 55 children fleeing Ukraine every single minute. And of course, these are still ongoing. Neighboring countries are providing and opening doors for children specifically. That means for young minor refugees. The trend unlikely to change if the war does not come to an end anytime soon. Meanwhile, in a dusty basement hidden from shelling, it's a shelter for newborn babies. Take a look at that. The place hosting 21 babies born to surrogates. The nurses are trying to take care of these babies because the parents are unable to reach these infants. Now, very interestingly, to counter the Russian death drones, the strike and that's striking Ukraine, the United States of America is now supplying Ukraine with switchblade drones. That means these are working on a suicide mission mode. These small drones carry a warhead that detonate on impact. Russia, on its part, has been using stealthy suicide drones to attack the Ukrainian army. Take a look of how drones and what kind of drones have now made an entry into the Ukraine war. Ukraine standing up to Moscow's offensive despite weeks of ravaging assault, showing unparalleled courage and spirit rarely seen in recent times. Showing it can be a match to Moscow's superior military might and far sophisticated weaponry, but Russia on its part has been using stealthy suicide drones to attack the Ukrainian army. These unmanned drones, evading radar and traditional air defense system, can slip past enemy line of fire. This devil in the sky is lethal, using loitering munitions which wait passively in the air, hovering over the target before coming down in one deathly swoop. The drone falls head first along a vertical trajectory similar to Kamikaze's, a Japanese aircraft loaded with explosives and making a deliberate suicidal crash on an enemy target. Russia is using these drones to make precision attacks on military targets in Ukraine. Each of them packs a small explosive charge up to 3 kgs. Targets are fed into the drone or through an image uploaded on its control system. The drone then finds its target and drops itself to blow the target into smithereens. These loitering munition drones are multi-purpose and used as part of a swarm of drones. Flying silently as fast as 130 km per hour with a flight duration of 30 minutes. To counter Russian depth drones, the US is now supplying Ukraine with switchblade drones, which works in similar kamikaze fashion. The small drones made by Aero Environment Ammunition Major carrying warhead detonate on impact. 
ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टुडे what kind of drones are now being used in ukraine very importantly and specifically are the kamikaze drone take a look at this very interesting these are super stealthy unmanned drone it carries explosives warhead that can evade the air defense systems which means it can slip past an enemy line as well therefore what does it do it seeks out a target that is fed via an image it hovers over the target waits for an opportune time right when it is specific it hits the target and explodes explodes in a suicide strike mission that can be used in a swarm drone system the top speed of these kamikaze drones is 130 km per hour and it can also carry a payload of about 3 kg now the flight duration um, the manner in which it can hover around the target and then strike is about 30 minutes which is long enough for it to be hitting the target so remember now kamikaze drones also making an entry into the ukrainian war So what does the ground situation look like take a look on your screens these are drone attacks that have been taking place from day 1 to now day 22 whether it's the satellite images whether it's that have been images that have been captured by the drones take a look of how the attack by air has been taking place in Ukraine 22 days on and now there are different kinds of drones that are making an entry while war refuses to end in the country